multiple case study is a very common approach to qualitative research. In this video, I will talk about Kathleen Eisenhower's approach to multiple case study. In contrast to quantitative research, where there are often right and wrong choices when it comes to methods, qualitative research is more diverse. And it's more difficult to make those choices, and you really need to understand what you're doing. And it re requires a lot of expertise to justify your research approach. However, to get started, people need easy to follow rules and guidelines. To this end, many researchers have started to imitate others and this has led to the emergence of two templates in management research. We have the Eisenhardt method and the Gioia method. And these have been basically um, emerged when researchers have started to look at who has been able to publish qualitative research in leading journals and then started to imitate these authors. This uh, Eisenhardt's method is uh, sometimes called post-positivist. I prefer to call it realist. The idea here is that the method is, is more about facts and events that people describe instead of uh, being about how people interpret those descriptions. So whereas the Gioia method is about understanding how people interpret the events around them, in the Eisenhardt's method we are interested in the events themselves and the way people interpret those events can produce bias to our analysis results. So we try to be more objective, whereas in Gioia method, we try to understand the people's subjective views on the events around them. There are also other differences. In Eisenhardt's method, the analysis proceeds uh, a bit differently. The, uh, the approach requires multiple cases, typically four to 10 different cases. So for example, if you study uh, power and politics, which is done in an example paper that I've used, then you need to, uh, pick a couple of organizations where power is, uh, where politics is applied and a couple of organizations where politics is applied less. And then uh, you, you analyze those cases and you compare. The analysis here in Eisenhardt's method is focused on first on, on within case analysis. So you try to understand each case, write the description about the case, and then, then you compare across the cases to come up with generalizable theory and propositions. So this is much more uh, about objective uh, description and explanation of reality instead of being about people's interpretation of that reality. These also differ in how you report the results and how you write the, re the, uh, the paper. In Eisenhardt's method, there is uh, this quantitative focus. So Kathleen Eisenhardt's papers quite often classify cases according to dimensions as being high and low, for example, you can classify the cases into high performing companies and low performing companies or companies that are in the middle. And, and then you seek associations between different variables. So this is a much more quantitative approach to qualitative research than the Gioia method, which is more about writing stories on, one, on what happened. And um, importantly, the Eisenhardt methods, while you develop propositions, that are statements about causal causality between two concepts, you need to explain the causal process. So, so she emphasizes that a study, a multiple case study, does, must provide explanations, not only associations and claims, but also explanations of how, why, and when those causal processes work. Let's take a look at an example. So my example is Eisenhower and Burgess, 1988, Power of Politics in a High Velocity Environment. And how does Kathleen Eisenhardt describe their data analysis process? Importantly, the data analysis process needs to be described transparently because there is no clear guideline or, or no clear standards on how you apply different techniques. Whereas in, in quantitative research, you could easily say that you apply regression analysis and that's it. In qualitative research, there's much more freedom on how you analyze your data, and therefore you need to explain how exactly you did it. So the data analysis starts by quantifying the data and seeking patterns. So uh, quite often in, in multiple case study, following the Eisenhardt approach, you have some concepts in your mind before you collect the data. And uh, then you simply code 
for evidence of those concepts and different levels of those concepts. For example, power and politics in this paper. Then you seek associations between power and politics. Are they correlated? If so, then you seek evidence for causality. Developing profiles is something that Eisenhower also recommends. So you write a case description for each case or each executive or, and you can do the same for, for each decision. So um, you can write profiles, short descriptions of the key things or key units that you study. Then uh, you develop timelines. You can, you can have a piece of paper that has a timeline and then you put the key events on that timeline and uh, you basically uh, construct causal processes or descriptions of some kind of processes using those timelines. Then uh, once you have developed the case descriptions, developed the timelines, then you start to compare pairwise. For example, you could take uh, pairs, you take a high performing company, a low performing company, you compare and you try to find differences. Or if you have two high performing companies, you try to find similarities. And this way you try to find patterns that explain how, how the cases differ or how they are similar with one another. Then uh, you iterate this many, many times and from this a theory emerges. So you first seek patterns, then uh, based on those patterns you start to seek evidence for causality and you iterate many, many times because sometimes when you find a pattern in, for example, two cases, that pattern may not exist in other cases and therefore it might not be the, uh, the ideal pattern to follow when you construct your theory. Finally, you compare with prior, prior research to seek for things that are similar and, and look for things that are conflicting with your theory. This explanation of, of data analysis also contains two other important and interesting things. First, um, there are conflicts. So, so people will not always tell you the same thing. Even if people observe the same events, they interpret the events differently. And people are not objective in how they explain reality. Instead, they explain their own interpretations of the reality. And in Eisenhardt's approach, you try to eliminate the influence of a person's interpretation of reality from the analysis. So if you have conflicting evidence, then you um, start looking at what is the reason why there's a conflict. Why is one person telling us one thing, another person telling us another thing, and then based on those conflicting accounts, you try to infer what is the reality actually like. Then uh, another thing that is useful to understand is that uh, the patterns are, are not laws. So the fact that you, you, most of the cases that applied here, that applied politics had centralized power, a power centralization does not always lead to the use of politics. So you need to understand that it's not a perfect correlation like it's never in a quantitative analysis. Instead, we look for some kind of association that may not be always strong, they can be weak as well. This is how Eisenhardt herself describes the process in uh, the seminal 1989 paper. So Eisenhardt's approach starts with uh, a research question like we always do. In contrast to some grounded theory studies where we start from a clean slate, we don't have any, any ideas of what the research result might be. In Eisenhardt's approach, there is quite often some uh, concepts that have been chosen before the study. That we want to study power, we want to study politics, so we need to code for evidence of power and evidence for politics in the data. Then selecting cases uh, follows theoretical sampling. So if we want to study the effects of, of power and politics, we should get cases where there's variation in power and variation in politics. So if at all possible, we should see companies that we know have centralized power and, and companies that we know where power is not centralized. And we can also do this while we sample. So Let's say that we, we don't know for sure if cases have centralized power or not. And let's say, assume that we have done four cases, three have centralized power, in one the power is not centralized, then uh, the remaining eight cases we should focus on finding companies where power is not centralized to a CEO. 
with other constructs such as performance it's much easier because you can get objective measures of those concepts without actually going and, and doing the engineering. Then uh, quite often in this approach there are multiple ways of collecting data. So you collect data through interviews but you can also use survey forms. So for example if you uh, want to study if power is centralized within the CEO you can simply use a power centrality scale in the form of a paper-based survey which you give to the informant to fill before the interview. So this is a combination of different kinds of data. You can use uh, data also from databases like financial data and you do the interview. Then uh, importantly data collection and analysis need to overlap always in qualitative analysis because you never know what all the concepts are while you start. So you might have an idea of the two central concepts but if you want to study the process through which power influences politics you may not know what the process actually is. And once you start to have an understanding uh, what is the process like then you can focus on your later data collection efforts on the important parts of the process that you discovered early on in your research. Then you do analysis. Analysis always starts with within case analysis or you analyze each case separately and then you uh, do cross case analysis so you do pairwise comparisons and for example comparisons using more than two companies. Then uh, follows the writing of the tables to show associations and then you write a narrative or description of why there are these relationships in the text and you enter quotes into the text that explain the process or explain the data, show the data that allowed you to infer that there actually is a process. And then finally you compare against prior literature because this is, not, this is typically done to uh, come up with a theory between known concepts. So it's not very common to apply this kind of multiple case study and, and develop new concepts using multiple case study. So grounded theory is perhaps better for developing new concepts this is more about uh, finding associations and finding causal relationships between concepts that you choose before you collect the data. And finally, how do you know when do you uh, quit adding more cases or stop adding more cases? Eisenhardt uses the concept of theoretical saturation. So when you have a case that no longer gives you more information to guide your theorizing, then you can conclude that you have reached saturation. So collecting more cases would not add much value anymore. So you add cases as long as you, your theory develops, but once you have the feeling that the latest case did not really add much, then you decide that this is the number of cases that I'm going to use. Quite often the number of cases is between 8 and 10 when this approach is followed.